I'm Angie Zababa and I'm the principal at Dawes Middle School. And Dawes Middle School currently serves 330 6th through 8th grade students. We serve the Northeast Lincoln neighborhood and 73% of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. We collaborate at an interdisciplinary and a content level and then ultimately we know that our individual teachers have the biggest impact on student learning. They are with the kids 95% of the time and at our school we have an amazing staff and 75% of our staff are brand new teachers. When we opened Dawes, we knew that we wanted to base our decisions on student data. We try and plan for kids individually, and this data has really helped us know maybe when and where, and it's led us to the how. Google Docs is such a great way for us to manage our data because we can get multiple people to put information into it and people can access it anywhere. From the beginning of the year, I've broken it down into the four categories based off of our rubric. It's part of the framework that I need to use for, my, for planning my instruction because it all comes down to, I mean, at the end of my learning progression, this is where I want kids to be. I formatively assess them along the way and I used kind of the working zones to do that, but then our final um, practice essay shows our totals and you can just see by the colors how much improvement that we've seen. Not only can I walk around the classroom and know what these three kids are working on, but so can my co-teacher and we don't even have to communicate because that's all we already know. We take our quiz at our desk and then when you come up here uh, she'll grade it right away and if you get all greens you can put up your pen right away but if you uh, get one wrong she'll have you go back and try to get into the green slot. They know right away if they're getting concepts or not and if they aren't they get the feedback right away that will show them how to get that um, correct so that they don't continuously practice in a incorrect manner. How do you feel when you put your clothespin on the yellow or the red? Uh, well, it depends how I feel about the subject. If I don't feel like I really know it, then I'm okay with it because it means I still need to work on it some more. But if I feel like I really know it, sometimes it kind of feels horrible because I thought <laughs> I actually knew it. If you're in the red zone, it's just an opportunity for you to really start asking the better questions, getting up there and showing what you're confused about asking your peers and in your small groups for help. Um, they know that if they're in this zone, they have ample time to practice, so by the time we're doing summative assessments, um, they should have been able to get all those questions answered. One of my teachers told me that my attitude wasn't right, so they gave me this to help me. And what is this? Explain um, this to me. It's a goal sheet. Okay. And, um, it goes through um, the basic things that you're supposed to be acting like in class. We're working on our comprehension and, and see we graph our fluency and see how we're doing if we're going up and down. You don't get that good feeling when your parents aren't happy with you, so it's kind of nice to actually give you privileges instead of taking them away. So. so you like showing this to your mom? Yeah, when it's good. It takes to be a good reader is fluency, accuracy, and how you read it. And the whole point of this is to really get the learner to advocate for themselves so that they can see where they are and they can set those goals to get themselves more, you know, proficient. It really can change your perceptions of your students because sometimes I have students who I just assume for some reason don't get it for whatever reason, maybe because of a language barrier or they don't speak up as much. They're kind of a silent student, even as much as I try to engage them. And then I get proved wrong because they actually get the best grades. It sounds like, oh, that's tedious and it's too much work, but um, it actually makes my job more purposeful. Sometimes I feel like my kids haven't learned anything and then I can go look at it and they have. Or it, it takes a, if you maybe a lesson went really well and I think that it went great, but then I have this data to show maybe it didn't. So I think it, it helps take away the emotion with, and gives you some evidence. Instead of 
assuming what all the kids know and going off of what I was able to collect maybe on visuals that I observed or things like that. I actually use the data to show me what percentage of my kids are proficient on each of these different math objectives that they're assessed on. Using the data makes you, forces you to see, hey, these kids are fine, these kids are not fine, here's what I can do to help them, here's what I can do to help these kids. And then also it tells me that, hey, this other, this child needs some enrichment, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't even, maybe I didn't, I thought that they were, they needed extra support when in turn they actually need something more challenging to do. It's much more efficient because it impacts my instruction. I'm a better teacher because I know what my kids are missing. And I think that intrinsic kind of involvement in all this really does help each individual student push themselves harder than they would, you know, if I was just telling them to do it because I had this data, but they didn't. We really set out to create a middle school that's different than any other middle school. And the foundation of our work is to ensure that all students are successful.